it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our second uh, the sp speaker, Peter Harwick. Peter is the CEO of Process and Drives Division at Siemens. Just last year, Siemens created a new division called Process Automation and Drives uh, to specifically focus on process industries. Uh, I think in a long time we have, first, first time we have now a CEO at Siemens specifically focused on, on process and drives. Please join me welcoming Peter to the podium. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a good morning. Mr. Nishijima-san, um, congratulations to 100 years anniversary of uh, Yokogawa. And um, it's a pleasure for me to talk today a little bit about industry in transition. And uh, what does industry in transition mean uh, for us at, uh, at Siemens? We're trying to put this under the headline of digitalization, which we see in many, many different fields. And uh, it is, in my view, a natural evolution when looking back in our industries maybe 100 years um, ago, and you've seen that on the chart earlier, when we started to electrifying some of our plants, and then maybe 50 years ago, moving to our first uh, PLC-controlled um, automation system, a couple of years later then into a, a process control system. And now I think it's a very natural move, maybe not for the next 50 years, this is go, going a little bit faster maybe, into the uh, digitalization. And I want to make a specific difference between digitalization in the discrete world and also the digitalization in uh, the process world. Uh, whereas in, in the discrete manufacturing, from my perspective, we are uh, already um, much further advanced in respect to digitizing the complete value chain of a product uh, to the uh, operation and the servicing of, of a plant or a factory, uh, which we call digital factory. Um, we're a little bit um, behind in uh, when we talk about uh, a digital plant or a process industry plant. In general, I would see uh, three schemes or three headlines uh, under, the, uh, under the word of digitalization. It's uh, number one, the digital twin of a plant. Number two, and uh, we've been discussing that in the, in the last NAMO conference in, in Europe uh, is the scheme of modularization. And then uh, third, but not lastly, the, um, uh, the Internet of Things. And uh, let me comment on those uh, three schemes as, as we see them or as I see them. I think over the lifetime, uh, and I start off with the digitalization of a plant or the digital twin of a plant. Over the lifetime of a plant, so from the original planning through the commissioning to the operation and then also the maintenance and the service, more and more steps in that value chain should be done without the intervention of men or women. Um, we want to make this as uh, automatic and as independent of people as possible. So the basis for that is that we have a digital twin of the real plant allowing us with one single data backbone, one single data backbone, to start the planning, do parallel engineering at all times, shorten up the commissioning, do maybe simulation before we enter into the real commissioning, and then safe in operations and be always up to date with data that is delivered out of the plant into the digital twin. And I'll come to that towards the end of my speech. The second scheme that I'm seeing is the topic of modularization. Prefabricated, pre-tested units, plug and play, to use a couple of buzzwords, is that fiction or is that something that's available today compared to very large monolithic plants 
in particular, when we go in the petrochemical industry, you would uh, have difficulties maybe think about a modularized refinery today. The challenge is surely a modular engineering system from small, sometimes discrete modules to a process controlled unit. And how do you bring those together? How do you bring these modules together and the digital twins of those modules, how do you bring them together and plug them into a, a plant? This is reality today if you go, for example, into the oil and gas industry. Last year, we have shipped more than several hundred million euros or dollars of prefabricated, modularized units pre-tested onto sites, remote sites, where you don't want to do any, any engineering, plug them together and have them up and running very, very quickly. So that is reality today. And as we move into more batch-oriented industries, like um, pharmaceutical, for example, I think we can see that already uh, today. Thirdly, the Internet of Things. At Siemens, we run uh, 270 own factories and plants uh, around the globe. The Internet of Things is nothing new. All our plants are connected, and this was part of the drive of automating them forward in the automation age. Today, however, we can do much, much more with the data that is created. So if you imagine to connect the data of the plant with the digital twin I was talking about earlier, be it the real data that comes out of the plant, or be it just purely the simulated data that is available before the plant is built through models, be it a monolithic plant, or be it modular. And if you put this in a well-risk, managed, and also self-organized network, self-organized network of sensors, actuators, units, or control systems, you can already imagine what kind of opportunities open up for many players in the industry to increase productivity for our customers. A digital twin of a modularized plant, fully connected, be it real or be it virtual, I invite you next door to visit one of our virtual plants that we've built up in our small booth next door. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to the discussion with you. Thank you very much.